14 and 248 overall. He led the Bruins to a region championship back in 2008, a couple of state final appearances in 2008 and 2017, and has eight 20 plus win seasons. He is Coach Craig Breon. Coach, good to have you on the show. Happy holidays. And we got a big basketball event coming up at Bethel High School this weekend. How you been? I've been great, Matt, doing really well, enjoying the start of this basketball season. And we're looking forward to tomorrow, having Allen down as well as some great basketball at Bethel High School. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. We'll get into that here coming up uh, with the Allen Iverson Holiday Showcase. We'll actually have the matchups flashing across our ticker here in just a second. But for you as the head man at Bethel, uh, I'm sure you get asked this a lot. There are so many great players that have gone through your program onto the college ranks, and you've had some memorable teams. Um, what, what do you love most about coaching and doing it as long as you've had it as successful as you have? Well, I love Bethel High School. Uh, I love this team that we have this present year. We're probably younger than I've ever been. In my 28 years at Bethel High School, we've got five freshmen. Four of them are playing uh, really good minutes. Uh, we've got three sophomores, three juniors, and three seniors. And our senior point guard, uh, Daniel Webb, has been out for eight weeks with a, hip, a fractured hip. So it's just a joy to come here and work with these young people. Uh, even when I retire from my position in the school, I hope I can still stay on and coach if we still have success at Bethel. But I love the kids and love the program. It's tremendous. And I know one of the young men, if I'm not mistaken for you, was it Terrence Handsome had a triple double in a game here recently? Yeah, Terrence is a junior. He probably played five minutes all of last year combined. Uh, but he's really the heart of our team. He's a small kid, about 5'10", uh, tremendous defender, has great instincts. But he's also led us uh, – he's second in scoring on our basketball team. He has a, un, just a knack for finding the rim. Uh, he's a transition-type player. He gets steals. He, he speeds up the guy with the basketball. And he's he's great at finishing in his size. And he's really been the glue to our team, the heart of our team uh, defensively. And he's gotten us going. And so far, we're four and two uh, with this group. And uh, we lost a game to Phoebus a few weeks ago. Uh, with two seconds ago, official made a call with two seconds. They went on the line, made two foul shots and one. So with this young group, we like the maturation uh, where, they're get, where they're at right now as a team and playing hard. And we just hope we can continue that. You know, the Old Dominion basketball for the women's side here on the road, actually has some med games, men's games as well this year. And I was told, I was telling someone just uh, the other night in Norfolk about Iverson's holiday showcase coming up this weekend at Bethel, come on out. And he said, it was the funniest thing, because, you, because, you know, Alan has such a huge heart. You've gotten to know him pretty well over the years. He's done so much for your community and your school, which we'll talk about here. And people, he's a polarizing figure. Either they love him or they don't like him. That's how it is with some people of his ilk. But they said, one of the things they love is the car shield commercial he does with Ric Flair and Ice-T. I don't know if you've seen her or not but it is pretty hilarious where he's in the barber uh barbershop chair and he's laughing at rick flair's woo uh, i mean just speak to what alan has done for you guys as a program that those who don't know because he has been very generous with his time and his and his dollars as well well it goes without saying i mean he doesn't publicize this but uh for almost 20 years uh through alan's generosity and his relationship with reebok uh they sponsored my basketball program our kids don't pay for tennis shoes, not just one pair. They get multiple pair, uh, team uniforms, uh, sweatsuits, travel sweatsuits. He sponsored us when we've gone to the state championship uh, to put us in hotels and ride charter buses. He's paid for us to go to camp at Charlotte a year ago for the week. Uh, he does anything and anything we ask him to do. Uh, just an outstanding person. Uh, he is 100% bleeding Bethel green and gold. And we contact him all the time and just ask him, uh, you know, thank, you know, just whatever you can do for us, whatever you can do for us, we appreciate it. And he just says, don't hesitate to call. Uh, he'll be here this weekend to support us again. He'll talk to the kids before the game. And whether we're having the success that we're accustomed to having or we're mediocre, uh, he is there 100% supporting and encouraging the kids. A super ambassador for this program. And we just love Alan for what he's done for the school and for the basketball program. Just a few years ago, he uh, was a part of getting Reebok to donate $100,000 to our school uh, so that students that weren't athletes could apply to colleges free of choice. And so he just is, his hand is in so many areas of, of Bethel High School. Uh, now that he's a vice president of Reebok, he has even more of a role. And so we're just so thankful to have him uh, to be a part of our program and help our kids. That, that is just so awesome there. And I know this event has been at various venues in the past, including at the Coliseum, but now it's back at Bethel High School where you all were able to name the gymnasium after Allen Iverson just a couple of years ago. And it, it was neat to see a lot of the footage and photos that came from that event. I think it was your season opener. I forget who it was against. You can probably – 
It was heritage. There you go. Uh, so some of that, but uh, and he got teared up a little bit, didn't he? He did, and and that's really who he is as a person. He's really emotional uh, when he talks to the guys about his experiences in life and how thankful he is for where he is in life to be able to help others. He tears up. He cries. He gets emotional, and so that's from his heart. He talks about you know his statue. You know he, he wasn't one of the biggest guys when he played, but he played with big heart. And so he's got a big heart in terms of athletics as well as giving to people. And that's why God has blessed him and he's blessing others as a result of that. And you've had, you've had so many young men come through your program coach of the years would take us. I don't even know the number. You probably have it written down somewhere of, of division one level players and even just college basketball players even beyond division one, two and three that have uh, been a part of your teams over the years. But it's just inspiring to the youth. I mean, there's so many kids that still, they see him as such a giant figure, even though he's not physically the most you know, imposing of people at, at barely, what, six feet tall. And he was just incredible to watch on the basketball court, also on the football field when he played at Bethel, in addition to his exploits on the hardwood. But uh, you, you see these kids, they want to be the next Ivers. And we've had some other players here recently uh, in years, you know, Cam Baker is playing at Georgetown now, Jeremiah owusu Koromo, who's one of the best defensive players in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns. They they see them and they also want to be like them. But, uh, you know, it's it's so cool to see these kids. And I'm sure it's part of why you do this, to see to help groom these young kids, whether they're going to be the next Iverson Baycoat or Owusu Kormo or their own self have an impact in, in the sport they're playing or in society in general, right? Definitely. I mean, uh, Cam was just in practice a week ago, just stopped in to see the guys. Uh, had a little break, walked, came in, just got some shots up and talked to the guys. Jeremiah came last summer and, and spoke with the guys about his his uh, situation at Cleveland and, and and to keep the job and how competitive it is at that professional level. You know, I talk about and I show the kids a picture when he was a ninth grader, how small he was. But he had a uh, he was wired differently mentally and how he approached uh, uh, athletics and getting himself ready to compete at a high level. And his body changed in a matter of a couple of years uh, from a little boy to a man's body. And of course, he had the mentality to compete. And we talk about that. And we, I walked the guys out to the state championship picture outside the gym a few weeks ago. And I told them, I said, look at this picture. When Allen won state championship, they had no one over six, three starting. Uh, they had two players that were stars in that team, Allen and Tony Rutland. I said, the other guys start in their role. I said, you guys aren't Allen Iverson or Tony Rutland at this present time, but you can star in your role. We need you guys to star in whatever role we've identified for you. And that's how we try to get them to understand your impact can be really big if you do what we ask you to do and, and do that very well. It may not be scoring. It might be defending. It might be uh, creating for other people. It may be scoring. But uh, find your role, identify your role, and believe in that role. And, and so the guys do look up to Allen Iverson and, and Jeremiah and Cam and Marcus Banks, who's at University of Maryland, Baltimore County, playing very well. Uh, we've had about 70 kids from Division One all the way through since I've been here go on and play college basketball, a lot of them at the high level. Uh, and we're proud of them. And they all come back. Well, not all, a majority of them. I would say three-fourths of the guys come back and, and still work out with our kids and talk to our kids. So we're proud of our alumni base. Uh, we have the Neptunes which is right next to us that plays at Phoenix Middle School. Some of those guys on that professional semi-pro team uh, played for us here at Bethel. They come back and volunteer and talk with our guys. So we have a great support here at Bethel, and that's why I stay in it, uh, because of our support. We have a program. It's just not guys that play and leave. We have a program. These guys come back, and they believe in this program, support the program. I want the kids that are presently playing to have success, not only in school, but in life and hopefully basketball. So that's why I stay here. And that's why I love Bethel High School. I got a great administration, a great athletic director, great support from Reebok and Allen Iverson. Why wouldn't I stay? If I can stay till I'm 100 and we're still having some success, I'll do that. There you go. He'll be on the, the quest of 500 plus wins. Craig Breon, our guest here on 757 Saturday, Saturday Sports Talk, available on YouTube as well as VirginiaPreps.com, our Facebook page with the Virginia Beach Sportsplex, and through Instagram and all over the web here uh, as we talk about the Iverson Holiday Showcase coming up at Bethel High School Saturday, December 23rd. Let's go through the games here, Coach. 11 a.m. It's Hampton Christian versus Norfolk Collegiate. Norfolk Collegiate's got a very, very good team despite falling on Thursday night to Charlottesville. They're one of the best teams, I think, public or private in the area. Then Oscar Smith and Grafton. Neat contrast to Styles, but we to the rest of the matchups, you get Oscar Smith and LeVar Griffin, the up-tempo, Jeremy Jordan's Clippers, more methodical, deliberate. So if you like different styles of basketball, they'll see that throughout the day, including those early matchups. Certainly. Yeah, I think the matchups are really, really good. Uh, the coaches bought into those matchups. We think it's going to be very competitive for the fans to come out and watch some really good basketball, quality basketball, different styles of coaching, different types of players. But the end result is uh, all these coaches have really good programs, and I think it'll be a great day for $10 to come out and watch basketball. Uh, 
at one location and see a lot of great teams and great individuals and great coaches with their programs. For sure. And you got Lafayette versus Phoebus. Uh, after that, uh, Phoebus with one of your former coaches who you've gone head to head with a lot of times in James Daniel, the Phantoms have had some wonderful teams over the years. John Champ in Norview. I didn't know this until someone told me this other day, uh, coach, you may have uh, known this, but I didn't realize that Rick Foster once played for Walt Webb at Coastal Christian, supposedly. I didn't know that. So a little, neat little storyline as John Champ takes on Norview in the uh, matchup at 330. Did you know that? I didn't know that. And I've known Walt Webb a lot of years and, and yeah. known Rick since he's been at Norview. I've never had any idea that – I thought Rick was uh, – uh, a guy that, where did Rick play high school at? Was it Norfolk? See, I was told again, I haven't confirmed this through Rick, but I was told by one of the coaches there. They said, you know, he played for him, I guess, at Coastal Christian. So I, I'm, I'm saying this out loud. If it's wrong, I'm sure I'll get corrected by Rick or Walt or somebody, but that's what I was told this week. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. So you've got that as well. And then wow. certainly you got some heavy hitters coming up after the uh, 330 games. You have obviously the likes of uh, you guys in the nightcap against Churchland, but Highland Springs and Lake Taylor and Hampton and Kempsville, all programs that have either been competing. Coaches that have won championships like Darren Stanley when he was at Booker T. You've gone up and had some hellacious battles with him over the years in the playoffs. Highland Springs is a couple seasons removed, and we've got Lake Taylor number one in the state in Class 3 presently in our Virginia Preps rankings, and Hampton number two in the state currently in Class 4. So there's some teams that people will see come late February, early March this year. Without a doubt. I mean, I think the the later games, and, I, I you know, we, we want all the games to be really competitive and great, and we hope we're – uh, showing up to, to give the fans and, and our supporters something to look at. But I think all the games are really uh, first class. The competition is going to be really good. And you're right, Hampton and Kempsville will be a great uh, game to watch. Styles are pretty similar. Guards play at a high place, pace. They are downhill guards. They've got deep benches. Uh, that's going to be a really, really good team of guard play. Uh, then Highland Springs, like I said, a couple years ago, they were state champions. But Lake Taylor with the two bigs, that have just matured and gotten better on the offensive end of the floor over the last couple of years. They are certainly a staple to be in the state playoffs again and, and go far. And then Churchland, we've got our hands full with Sincere Jones, a guy that can do a lot with the basketball. So we've got to be on our A game defensively to make it tough for him, uh, just not to get easy buckets and, and get at the rim so easy. But it's a great day of basketball, and we're really excited and looking forward to it. Yeah, you don't mind that sincere Jones kid for uh, Mike Collins truckers getting dunks and blocks. It's not against you. Do it against somebody else, right? Without a doubt. We, we're we going to watch film in, in a short time again about his tendencies. We got to keep him out of the lane. We got to box him out. He has a variety of ways to score. I know when they played uh, James Monroe, I think a week or two ago, he had 23 of his 32 points in the second half. So he can score in bunches and quickly. We got to make it very difficult for him to get touches. And when he gets the touches, we got to have bodies in front of him and not let him turn a corner and get to the basket because he will try to finish and dunk. And he also has a good shot in space. So we've got our hands full. We're watching film again today and, and just trying to devise a plan that's not too uh, complicated. Obviously, we just want to, you know, get in his way and make it tough for him. Our last couple minutes here with Craig Briani. He's the head basketball coach of the Bethel Bruins, up to 414 wins in county. They get the Allen Iverson Holiday Showcase going out there Saturday, December 23rd. Games all day long. They're starting early at 11 a.m. The last game is going to be tipping off with his Bruins playing host to church and right around 8 o'clock after those matchups you got with Kempsville and Hampton and obviously Lake Taylor Highland Springs. It is 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Coach, uh, give me sort of an assessment. You've talked about your team a little bit, but the Peninsula District this year and in your region, Region 5B, which has been a bear the last couple years, you just missed the playoffs this past year, but there's always some good teams. Woodside from your district and your region was state champs. Maury was in the state championship game just the season before. Uh, Menchville and Kickatan the last two years have gone 22-0, and 21-1, and not even gotten to states because they had to run into someone else from your district and region in the semifinals at the scope. How do you size it all up where it's – I've gone on record saying it. Some haven't liked it. Some agree. Some disagree. That I think your, your region – is as tough as it gets in the entire state and all the 24 region six classifications. I'm sure you don't disagree with that, having to go up against these teams and been on the good side and the bad side, both sides. Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head, Matt. I mean, you know, I'm not slighting any other region. I think basketball in this area, just like other places, is really, really tough. Uh, but which side is the standard right now? I mean, they, they returned four starters from a team that won the state championship last year. Uh, they've got some additions to that talent which makes them really deeper. When Steph goes to the bench, he doesn't lose a thing in terms of competitiveness and productivity. So they're the team, they're the standard right now uh, in our district. Of course, Minfield with Lamont over there, always vying uh, and very, very competitive and talented. Uh, but Eric at, uh, at Hampton, uh, he's got some new additions there and some kids that have returned. Gavin 
uh, their six eight kid. They're they're going to be in the mix uh, in the peninsula because they're just so deep and quality deep as well. But then you look at Kings Fork coming to five B. You look at Green Run, who's been great. Norview, who is really good. Maury, we played them this summer at the Christopher Newport team camp and their front line they had six eight six 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 i believe and they had all state guard returning deep team uh princess ann is tough so you when you get to the the playoffs and you can be 22 and 0 i know we were there when duke crew duke cruz played from we were 27 and 0 that year we were ranked number one in the state we ranked in the nation we got up against a, a really good tall team in the regional a game to go to state playoffs and they beat us on a weak side rebound put in and knocked us out we Ended our season 27 and one. So you can be really, really good, uh, but you don't play your best in those many, uh, those games that mean so much and you can find yourself home. So that's what I think 5B and, and really all these uh, conferences are here. It's really, really tough. So, regardless of what your record is, you got to come ready to play and compete and uh, uh, hope that your kids are playing well at the right moments. I'll get you on this and I appreciate the time so much. I bring this up to Coach Young a lot on the show and he always voices his opinion. You're a veteran coach, so you have the right to, and the floor here to platform to give yours out there. There are so many great things I know that you all enjoy about coaching the sport. What would you like to see tweaked or adjusted as far as maybe the playoffs go, the rules? There are some new rules this year as far as the foul count for those who don't know about free throws and how that goes this year from the quarters as opposed to the half. You can go through that a little bit. But anything you'd like to see addressed, be it in your region, be it uh, rule-wise, be it just how the, the postseason works because I know you all don't get always the say in the room that so many of the administrators do and the VHSL folks do when they come to these things, but you'd like to obviously get your input, I'm sure, to some of these matters. What would you like to see addressed or changed potentially? Well, we, we complained about it a lot uh, in our 5B. Uh, we were the only conference that it took six teams into the playoffs prior to this year. Now the ADs and principals voted it would be eight like other conferences. I don't like uh, the fact that teams can be under 500 uh, if that's the mark we're looking at and make the playoffs. And I'm, I'm speaking of, you know, teams equivalent to football, two and eight, one and nine. There's no place in my opinion. I would not want to have my team participate in playoffs with that type of, of a performance. I think you should earn your way in the playoffs. If it's eight teams, that's fine, but you should have a, a quality record uh, going to the playoffs and make it competitive and give these kids a chance. When you're going in there and you're below subpar in your performance and you're playing against teams uh, such as a Woodside or such as a Maury, who I think are the standard in 5B uh, or Kings Fork, uh, you put yourself in a situation where your kids are going to be embarrassed and uh, uh, the experience itself is not good. So the, the five fouls, I told our kids, that can weigh in your favor or against you. Uh, it forces you to defend without fouling, just you know, waste, wasteful fouls. Uh, I think we've done a good job with managing that uh, right now because it's been to our favor in terms of you know teams that are playing aggressive, they're trapping full court. They're reaching a lot. So we go to the line. We just got to convert those opportunities. And so I think that works in our favor. I'm not such a big proponent of a shot clock. You know, people talk about that. We haven't had a lot of teams that stall the ball against us or play ball control basketball. So that's not an issue at my um, present concern. Uh, if it came in, we would adjust to that rule as well. But right now, the fouls have not worked against us in terms of uh, putting teams on the line a lot early because we, we, we focus on just defending without fouling a lot. Uh, but uh, again, just great, great basketball and, and whatever happens, it happens. You know, like I said, some things are out of our control, uh, but I, I don't want to be in playoffs with my program if we haven't earned the right uh, to be there. I'm completely with you on just about all those. The shot clock thing, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I'd like to see some data or evidence that supports why it would help the game per se, because I know it is a financial issue as far as getting them all implemented in every gym. And with the playoffs, I mean, we saw the unfortunate situation of football where Phoebus beat Jamestown by triple digits and one in nine teams. You, you, you hate it for both sides because you're, if you're the team that's great, you, it's hard to tell a team to stop playing, although that situation could be a little bit different. And then the one in nine team, you know, it's like they shouldn't, you know, you feel you feel for them. It's, it's a tough situation. And in basketball, we've seen like one in 21, two in 20 get in when there's been some teams that are winning double digit games, not making it. So hopefully those things will get addressed as we move forward. But it should be a fun day again for basketball coming up Saturday. Bethel High School going out there, go support the local area and the teams. You'll see Allen Iverson as well. And he is always generous with his time. He also gives you some photo ops if you get a chance to catch him. I mean, I was going to bug him in the middle of a play and go running up to him and crashing him or tackling him. But he is, he is very kind with the, with the kids out there and does some autographs from time to time. So it should be a great day of hoops all day long. Uh, Coach, thank you so much for the time. All the best to you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And I look forward to seeing you over there at Bethel High School. Thank you, Matt, for your support. Not just this year. Every year that you've been involved with high school sports and in, in, in football, basketball, baseball, you are the guru. You're the best. 
and you hear it all the time. I don't know how you find time to do it. You're with Old Dominion Women's Basketball. You've also uh, commentated with the men's basketball from time to time, but you're all over the state, not just here at 757. You know these kids like the back of your hand. Uh, you're the person I contact when I need some accurate information because you're just so uh, so in tune to what's going on. So thank you for your support. Thank you. We look forward to having you here tomorrow, supporting all the teams in this in this event we have going on. And you have a happy holidays as well for you and your family. Well, thank you so much, Coach. That means a whole lot to me uh, personally. And it's always the access and cooperation of guys like yourself that help make my job all the easier. And uh, all the best to you and your program. And we'll see you out there. That's Craig Breon, head boys basketball coach of the Bethel Bruins, the Allen Iverson Holiday Showcase going on all day long. We'll have some coverage for you, some tweets, all kinds of updates throughout the day and later on on virginiapreps.com. We'll take a time out here from some of our sponsors that make it possible for us at the Plex. It is 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Stay tuned. <laughs> 